Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in my series, Man vs. Machine. Again, we're going to continue looking at the match between Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue, played in 1997. This is the third game in the match, and um, I posted um, my analysis of the first two games on my channel. I'll put the links in the description. And without further ado, let's get right to the game. Kasparov, uh, again, opted for a quiet opening um, with 1d3. In the first match, he played um, one knight three and proceeded to play the king sending attack and won a quite an excellent game with it. And this uh, this move is actually never seen at grandmaster level for the simple reason it just hands over the first move to black. But um, some people could use this just in case they wanted to play like uh, play a opening with opening as black with white. For example, um, computer went uh, d5 here. And after d4, um, and then c5, and then e3, you'd be in a reverse queen game uh, decline. And of course, you can equalize quite easily, but usually with white, you want to fight for the advantage. And e5 was deep blue's response. Knight at 3. And you could have you could play a reverse Scandinavian as well in this point. Um, and it wouldn't be a bad battle choice. But Kassar opts for a similar setup to last time with knight at 3. Knight c6, c4, knight f3 and 6, and a3. Now this is a standard position of the Sicilian defense, but with the colors reversed, and um, uh, white is a tempo up, of course, and that is enough to confuse deep blue. For example, if he went d5 here, and then takes, and then takes, we have basically transposed to a narrative with the colors reversed, with the same structure, with the pawn on a3 instead of a6, pawn on d3 instead of d6, and maybe if you play e5, then knight b3, then bishop e2, bishop e6, um, um, bishop e3, um, queen d7, knight bd2. Uh, so this is basically an English attack uh, with the colors reverse, and it's a quite interesting opening. You can uh, sort of go more in depth, more in depth uh, with it yourself. But um, deep blue didn't play um, d5 and opted for a close lane with d6, knight c3, bishop e7, g3. Black castles gets his king to safety. Bishop g2, Fian carrying the bishop, and this activates the bishop on the long diagonal and is building a more solid home for white's king. Bishop e6, developing um, black's last minor piece. Castling and getting the king to safety. Queen d7, and I think um, uh, most most humans would be worried about a uh, knight coming to h5 and would play normally h6 first. But uh, remember that the most um, important thing about this match is that Deep Blue is not human. And that was basically the entire marketing point. So um, Queen d7 was white, and now knight g5. The knight move complicates the position. So it's no wonder that uh, Kasparov actually thought for 20 minutes before playing this move. And, and before going down this path, Black must prefer to preserve this bishop with either bishop g4 or um, bishop or the move called. Um, deep blue played bishop f5, and of course it's not that favorable to play something like something like rook d8 and give up the bishop pair, because you just given up the bishop for for no compensation. This bishop is a very good bishop. It's not like um it's blocked in any in any way, and this bishop is also ready to come out and uh, uh cause lot sorry cause lots of troubles for black. So bishop f5 was played. Now e4, and this is the last move that has never been played before this game. And with this, um, and there's only been one game in the data fix with this position, the this game itself. Bishop g4, moving the um, bishop into the game. f3, bishop h5, knight 3 and having sidelined this bishop, sidelined the bishop here, uh, Kaspar retreats his knight before preparing um, to pawn storm the king side with his pawns. And this bears some great similarity to the king's Indian defense, which he plays with black. And uh, with colors reversed, and um, this uh, bears some great similarity. And um, Kasparov is a great expert of the King's Indian defense, known as one of the two main exponents of the King's Indian defense, um, other, along with Bobby Fischer. And of course, you have the winner of the Everything Masters, um, uh, Timur Rajaba, who is also a great expert. Knight d4 was played, and I'm getting the knight in the center, and now knight f2. You want to re uh, reposition the center to a better location, and while this may, uh, may take time, the position is very close. For example, you have an idea of maybe queen e1, then knight d1, knight e3, and then getting the knight to d5, where it's going to be a very strong piece. 
Um, so when the position is closed, you do have time to make these snipe maneuvers that can improve your position. H6, and now this is a cautious but probably wise decision because you're giving this bishop an, es an escape square um, in case the spider doesn't attempt a pawn storm, for example, g4, then um, h4, and um, you won't ever lose the bishop here. Bishop e3 was played, uh, developing Kasparov's last mind piece. c5, and now this just locks in the uh, knight, the knight in the center, but um, the white knight also has a good square in the center. b4, and now this, um, using a, trying to pawn, uh, make a pawn break, for example, you took, you wouldn't be in that good of a position. Because after a takes b4, white has a lot of queen side space, and this knight is going to fall, and uh, well, black's going to have a very bad pawn structure. So, um, uh, b4 is a very good move. So b6, so, um, oh, taking is not favorable. Now rook b1 was played in the game. And now um, king h8. Uh, king h8 was played. And um, this it's hard to say what this move is about. It might be that um, deep blue can usage is a time where the uh, position will open up. And the, where the king is tucked away in the corner, and it's a very um, like a very prophylactic move. It was a yeah, it was a it was a very prophylactic move. And now rook b two. And um, after the game, uh, Kasparov demonstrated the following variation. If, for example, if he had played h four at this point, then there would be a six. Now you have bishop takes d4, c takes c4, and now um, you have uh, this good move, uh, intermezzo so of bishop h3 attacking the queen. Now queen c7, moving the queen out of danger, and knight d5 getting the knight into the center, knight takes c5 and c takes d5. And the point of h4 was to keep uh, black's bishop from moving to uh, g5 at any point, the black, dark square bishop, where it controls um, c1 and um, until uh, and a3, um, but now white is uh, dom set to dominate the c file, but because yeah, Robert didn't uh, really want to play it in the game, and instead opted for um, rook b2 instead, which, uh, sorry, rook b, sorry, sorry, um, uh, rook b2 instead, which is uh, also a very strong move. Now um, a6 was played following the rook b2, now bishop takes c5, uh, b takes c5, and now um, uh, bishop h3 using that intermezzo uh, Kasparov has under his um, uh, up his sleeve. Now queen c7 as from moving the bishop away. Now um, uh, bishop g4, now basically um, offering a trade, and while you do get double pawns at the end of it, um, you get an open file for your rook, and now the position is slightly more open, and you can get an attack on this weaker black king. Um, during, um, bishop h3, um, bishop queen c7, now bishop g4, sorry, instead of, um, bishop takes, uh, g4, you have bishop g6, now f4, and now, um, white strategy is, uh, directed against the bishop on d6, just bury it by playing pawn to f5, and then it's just out of the game, and then force an end game, where, um, white has a better position. And now, um, e takes e, um, e takes f4, g takes f4, and now well, because Farah has a very powerful pawn center, he has a knight itching to lead to d5 once the um, once black's knights can be shifted from f6, and black's uh, bishops have no scope at all, and they are not doing that well, honestly. A human with this position against Kasparov would probably feel completely, completely demoralized. Actually, anyone who with the Kasparov position against Kasparov would probably feel demoralized, but even more so with this position. Um, so after uh, g takes f4, uh, queen a5 leaping into action here. Now um, d blue just uh, abandons its fight for the squ uh, for squares and just grabs a um, pawn in, uh, a pawn instead, targeting both this um, a3 pawn as well. Now you have um, bishop d2 protecting the knight, queen takes a3 winning the pawn, rook a2 attacking the queen, queen b3 offering a trade of queens here. Um, f5 now, attacking this bishop, and uh, now queen takes d1, now um, another in-between move, now d blue can use. 
and instead of taking with the rook, which might have been more natural, um, because rook takes with the bishop, the idea is to probably read out this bishop to the other side of the board. Bishop h7 is played, uh, moving the bishop back. Knight h3, um, moving the king trying to get the knight to f4, where it would be very strong. Um, rook fb8, now putting this rook on this nice open file, which again, why when we're taking with the rook would have been slightly more natural. Knight f4, um, getting the knight to it's uh, a really good square. Now bishop d8, you have to get this bishop into the game somehow, and this is how um, deep blue um, prefers to do it. Um, knight fd5. Now you also get the sign in the center, and it's not really that good to take yet. Um, I would, um, I, I personally wouldn't take, as um, uh, you just get another knight in the center following it, and there's no way to challenge it. And if uh, deep blue does not take, he plays knight c6, moving the knight back, and you can just reroute it to maybe d7 later on. Now bishop f4, getting the bishop into the game again. Now knight e5, capitalizing on this outpost here. Bishop a4, sorry, bishop a4, getting an, the bishop to a nice diagonal. Now, um, knight takes d5, finally, and then knight takes d5, and now a5. And now this was where the first real mistake of this game occurred. This was a positional uh, mistake from deep blue. Um, uh, because it's sort of, it's very slow, and um, allows Kasparov to Kasparov some, uh, a nice, um, a nice position. Now bishop b5, this bishop is on a nice outpost and this square is controlled by two pieces so it cannot, this pawn cannot be pushed. Now rook a7, you want to double this, uh, these rooks to push the pawn down the board. King g2, um, getting just the king um, to a better square, it's an end game now and the position is sort of close so there are no dangers for it. Now g5, attacking the bishop. And now bishop takes e5 check, um, uh, taking on Bassant would have been the more natural move for a lot of us. But after bishop takes g6, this bishop can get back into the game, which Kaspar wanted to avoid. So he takes with the bishop on e e5. Now after d takes f5, d takes e5, he plays f6, completely locking in this bishop as well. And that's this is the crucial move. Black's position is um, cut in two. There's a little connection between the um, king side. And the queen side, which is uh, potentially extremely dam dangerous for this weak black king. Although um, Kasparov is a pawn down, which is his um, competition, his superbly placed knight is um, uh, very dangerous, and his bishop also dominates a lot of squares with a lot of help from this pawn on f6. And now bishop d6, trying to get the bishop back into the game. Now h4, and the idea of this is to sort of. Um, uh, liquid, um, attack the uh, king side with your uh, pieces if the position ever gets opened up. Now g takes h4, um, deep blue doesn't, uh, doesn't feel scared about taking. King h3 attack, um, trying to get the pawn back. Um, king g8, king takes h4, winning the pawn. King h7, now king g4, preventing um, any like bishop h5 ideas. And now bishop c uh, c7. And now, because uh, uh, finally, Deep Blue is willing to just give a pawn back to a way to free his position and um, at least get something playable in the, in the upcoming positions. And now, um, Kasparov uh, takes Knight takes c7, Rook takes c7, winning the piece back. And now, Rook takes a5, winning his, winning a pawn. And um, uh, uh, now, since this this sort of liquidated the position. And while um, Kaspar is the one with all the winning attempts here, there's a extreme, um, Deep Blue has ample resources to defend. Um, rook d8 now, getting the rook on this open file, targeting this weak pawn. Rook f3, defending the uh, weak pawn on d3. King h8, moving the king back because you don't really have anything else to do. King h4, just again shuffling the pieces around. Um, king g8, again, um, um, trying to bring the king to the game this way. Um, rook a3, um, defending this pawn another time. 
King Jake, Jake rather than trying to bring bring in the king. Um, Deep blue just moves his king back, just shuffling his pieces. Now um, rook a6, moving the rook back, moving the rook um, into a slightly more active position. But right now, all they're doing is just shuffling pieces. King h7. And now this prevents the positional threat after um, uh, bishop c6. For example, um, uh, um, there was a nice move with bishop c6 right now. If allowed another tempo, and then uh, after rook d6, um, and white can, sorry, yeah, and um, after king f7, yeah, this prevents the uh, positional threat of bishop d um, uh, c6 controlling a lot of territory um, because after rook d6, um, white cannot ex uh, escape the pin. And now I'm um, bringing the rook back one more time. Now king h6. And now rook a6, and now this game is a draw, and um, it was ended peacefully. But it was quite interesting, especially in the middle game portion. And um, um, after two decisive results, um, Kasparov and um, Deep Blue finally end uh, in a peaceful result, and um, uh, the scores are currently 1.5 to 1.5. And it was a great game overall. If you want, then. Now this, and you can, you could potentially pick up this opening to confuse your opponents, especially if you're a die-hard Sicilian player, as not how Kasparov is, and um, get some uh, Sicilian-like positions or even King uh, King's Indian-like positions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking this video to help support my channel. Please put your suggestions for other games in the comments below, and. Uh, Tell me how I can improve my videos uh, in the future. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.